Today we're checking out Wall World. Yes, that's the name of this game, don't laugh. Uh, this game is a mining-based roguelite similar to Dome Keeper, as you probably know of. Generally, I don't have a good opinion of roguelites since I find them to feel a lot more manufactured and difficulty in it. It can be too hard on the first one, but I do like this game a lot. And I might even play it alongside Dome Keeper. But also, I think it's subtly good for different reasons. It's only $5, maybe not endless replayability, but you're definitely gonna get your money's worth out of this one. I'm at two hours and I'm really enjoying it. I'm gonna enter the game for all of the upgrades. Um, <clears throat> here I am. Everything is pixelated and like jiggling. Uh, but let's just go in because I think that this one is easier, easier seen as an explanation than played. I'm probably just going to cut to whatever run we do really well in because this is a roguelite in all in all sense of the term. Uh, we are going to fail a lot and I don't expect our first run will be very good. But yeah, I've already got a decent number of upgrades and pretty much it's similar to Dome Keeper where I am going into some sort of mountainside and mining out all of the minerals, Marie, out of the mountain. Uh, but to differentiate from Do Dome Keeper, yeah, you are traveling up and down this wa uh, wall. I mean, this is a wall wave defense game where we are mining. We're mining out resources. I mean, minerals is what I meant to say, of course. We're mining out minerals. We're going up and down the wall, and then eventually a bunch of creatures come and try to kill us. And we're collecting resources similar to Dome Keeper. You should probably play Dome Keeper before you play this so you understand everything of what I'm saying. But I mean, it, it will become pretty self-explanatory fa pretty fast. I would consider this again as one of those games that I would consider more fun to play than to watch. Because they do come and go. A lot of the simulation games that I play on this channel are very fun to, you know, play but not... not f or, uh, sorry, the other way around. Well, fun to watch but not to play. Like, I would consider The Sims, Project Zomboid in that category. I don't find Zomboid fun to play. I find it more fun to watch. For example, despite the fact that my entire career has been based on the game, I enjoy watching other content creators do it more than I enjoy playing it myself, strangely enough. Uh, but yeah, to differentiate from Domekeeper, yeah, you're traveling up and down a wall, because the Earth is not flat, but a wall, of course. Other things to say? Um, yeah, again, this is another one of those games where I hope that you watch the VOD, but just go ahead and check it out for yourself. I mean, it's five dollars and you're gonna have fun. Alright, anyway, I had fun. Okay, this is similar to Dome Keeper in that... I mean, I'll probably just spend a lot of time comparing it to Dome Keeper, but then finding a lot of things that I do really like. Um, I do like Dome Keeper, that is. But yeah, we're gonna upgrade the exosuit first. First, we need to acquire the resources, seize the means of production, of course, as it always begins, and we will use our secret weapons. Okay, there we go. Very beautiful graphics on this game. I think that's very self-explanatory. I personally like it. I personally like it. Although on the other hand too, I think that Ro- Man, more Dome Keeper comparisons. Dome Keeper had kind of a more minimalistic pixel art feel, which I also liked, but for different reasons. And that's a very difficult look to nail, but at the same time, they're both good for different reasons. And I do recommend checking them both out. Only because these two VODs will follow one another in succession on my VOD channel, I imagine. So people will necessarily be comparing the two. Um, but there's also a lot of good Easter eggs in this game. As you travel up and down the wall, you're use, you're fighting this timer, 17 minutes and 31 seconds. What happens then? Do you explode? Does it all go to your thighs? The question naturally arises. Um, hang on a second, I'm just gonna turn on notifications for a second. Uh, then a giant tentacle monster will come and try to kill us, which as you obviously know, that's what happens at the end of each of our own lives here on Earth. People don't pass into the next life. Uh, if there is a next life, but rather a giant tentacle monster comes to kill everyone, okay? It's just an invisible tentacle monster. All right, now that I've gotten rid of all the random things on my mind, uh, let's continue with our suit upgrades because obviously those are some of the best. Also, Sc Scarafly, thank you very much for the prime. Papa Amphibian. I don't mind if you call me Papa. I mean, I hope that you have a good relationship with your dad and you're not using it to overcompensate uh, for, like, the lack of the love that might have been there. But at the same time, I I feel like I'll just take it. I'll be... I accept... I won't accept you as a dependent. Um, 
But, you know, thank you. I appreciate it. Generally speaking, father holds a, um, like a venerable role. Thank you. I appreciate that. You can come. Oh, you become a mortal if you beat the monster? Honestly, I have about two hours in the game. It is ridiculously difficult, I, it seems to me, although it is truly a roguelite. I will tell you my philosophy on roguelites because you deserve to know it since I'm covering one. I don't like to play these games for 15 hours when I'm testing them out because I find that that... Well, just first off, logistically, it takes too long for me to cover a lot of ground, and I like to cover a lot of games um, because that's... Well, it's partly my job. It's also partly that when I've been playing a game for 10 or 15 hours straight, it can be a bit much. I find naturally, if I weren't a content creator, I would probably take more breaks from it. Um, but also, that being said, I think that the magic of discovery also lay herein. So I enjoy it for this reasoning. Um, other stuff to be said. I'm also lazy, so that's another reason why I don't uh, do more work at presenting it better. But yeah, I, I hope that... I can overcompensate for the lack of game with my so-called streamer persona and personality and that uh, hopefully that will somehow carry us through the next 15 to 20 minutes. You know, I was philosophizing on this the other day, like, hang on a second. Popular misconception, philosophizing isn't a word. The word is actually philosophizing. I learned that in college. That cost me like $50,000, so... Appreciate it. You ever regret your liberal arts degree at certain times when you're trying to construct a grammatically accurate sentence? I can't pronounce words, though. I just make sounds and hope that it's the thing I was trying to say. Ah! Means have a nice day. Okay, I'm going to hop along the wall. Let's look at the game's primary mechanic. Wow! Okay, we are going to use the spider drone, which is, I think, what this thing is called. The spider robot? Whatever it is. It's powerful. Oh, Easter egg! It may not be Easter, and this may not be the Easter bunny, but we have some deep lore to, to uh, uh, uncover. Um, that's kind of how language works. Yeah, I just say these sounds and hope that people will understand them. That's fair. Was there a great flood? And isn't... That proof that the wall with the capital W is not infinite. Well, let me put it this way. Who told you that the wall was flooded to the very foundation? Lots of issues with this sentence. I'm not going to question it. We're just going to get back into our weird contraption. This is really good because we got the, uh, we got the green resource, which obviously can be used for repairing stuff. I'm just going to continue to focus on resource acquisition, and we'll do this through the next few playthroughs. Uh, that being said, that being said, oh look, another hollow in the wall. Now, I have purchased enough roguelite-themed upgrades to make my life easier at the beginning. The silver spoon in the mouth of, uh, of video gaming. You know what I mean? The being born with an advantage, the rolling into life with a lot of economic advantages, you know? I think that's what roguelites are just an allegory for capitalism. As you fight through the generations of your of your intergenerational struggle with your family and encounter the many intergenerational traumas of the previous generation, thousands have died before me, which is why perhaps well actually not thousands, but only tens of my characters have died. But for that reason, I would say that Rogue Legacy is a very interesting roguelite. You guys know Rogue Legacy? I think we've also got one of those situations a la Dome Keeper, where, uh, ooh, I wanna get the, um, I wanna get this thing a little bit more, but let's go for this for right now, because we do have green, we don't have white. This is rare. We can also move the spider robot up and down the wall. As, ooh, that wasn't a very good shot as we fight. I'm not really gonna do it right here because I just wanna kinda stay on top of this mine and I don't think that this enemy wave is too, too threatening. I'm not gonna take too, too much damage here. But we also might just not get the upgrades that we need and be screwed. Like I'm supposed to get a, like a drone that's gonna help me defend the other side of the bot. But yeah, so far this is not looking like a particularly good run. My resources have been good, but I haven't gotten good upgrades really. Wampa Stampa, hey, thank you very much for the 22 months. I got a moment. Here we go. 
very satisfying though. I will say that I I found Rogue, sorry, I found Dome Keeper to be more instantaneously enjoyable in terms of the sound effects. Although this game is drawing on me. Ooh, thing. Okay, so we got a special upgrade because we're special. Ooh, 5% chance to get resources from any block. Very, very exciting. Very, very exciting. Is there any progression between runs? So there is a lot of progression between runs. My vacuum that I use to destroy blocks, or like the drill and vacuum I use, uh, has greater capacity from run to run. I can buy that. I can also buy upgrades to make the spider a little bit faster, or another upgrade that I purchased was the one that allowed me to jump up and down the wall, which lets me go just a little bit faster. You can kind of strategize it to either like build turrets near the mine entrances, and there are a number of upgrades that keep it interesting. I don't know how quite how many continue from run to run, but like for example, when you first start, you unlock only the first, um, hang on a second, I'm just gonna go back and buy an upgrade quick. Or you, you destroy only the first like one block in the mine. Then you buy something that allows you to buy, destroy it three, and then I destroyed 10 right now. So I'm really giving myself a very good advantage when I enter these mines. Uh, I need more of the blue, what do you even call this stuff? Blue rock. Crystal blue persuasion, let's call it that. And look, I'm mining faster now. But yeah, I mean, we have all the elements of a really good looking roguelite. I think that this fits the roguelite genre really particularly well. Um, and I just like the formula of the original uh, dome keeper enough to get this. I'm surprised how quickly these came out. Or, you know, I never really checked the succession of them. And I was like, we may need to purchase a turret upgrade soon because I really haven't put in any work there. Okay, I'm going to just exit the mine. And they call it a mine! Oh, I can actually jump over the enemies. This is a move. So I'm going to move the spider while I'm fighting because... Uh... I... I'm better at running away from my problems than encountering them. So I'm going to just continue down that problematic spiral of handling my problems. Uh, but at the same time here, ooh, we also can use this to kind of dodge the enemies. We don't really have any dodge in Dome Keeper, and this is an interesting element that kind of just adds a bit more action. I like that. Although the thing is now halfway destroyed, that's not too particularly good at this time. Uh, generally speaking, I've usually unlocked some type of upgrade that allows me to, like, defend the... I keep calling it the Dome, the Spider Bot, a little bit better. Uh, but I have not, unfortunately, in this run so far. There are also other upgrades that can give you, like, three lasers and just make you basically nuke all of these resources over here. Now, for here, I should be one out of every 20 or so getting another resource in my inventory. So it, it is now worth it to destroy empty blocks. That's not an upgrade that I had had yet. Okay, here we go. Vacuum is full. There's no reason. We can also kind of play this mini game with the vacuum where we just try to keep everything like vacuumed back to the ship in case if we don't have enough capacity, but I find that that becomes problematic and annoying uh, rather fast. We don't really have anything that we need. I'm just going to increase the fire rate and damage because now I've entered procrastination mode and I will probably die here, but that that is okay because everyone dies. Um... I mean, it's it's not okay. We should try to avoid it. What more is life than trying to avoid one's death for many years? Um, there is more to it, but to a certain extent, I sometimes think it's like that. Ooh, special upgrade. Very cool. Very cool and sexy. Here we go. Up. It's so spherical, curvy, and uh, arousing. Okay, that's not good. Uh, I'm going to take this back. I'm trying to sync up the waves to like how prepared I am. So let's go back here. This is gonna give me a free upgrade. Kind of like that miner dude that we saw um, with the construction hat on before. Okay, so I got another thing. Please be, yes, I found the drone system. Thank God, otherwise I would have been dead on the spot. Uh, and that would not have been good. Okay, I do wanna get some of these upgrades, but uh, do I do this or do I do this? I don't really want to do anything. I don't want to invest too much in upgrades right now. I think I'm just going to jump up the wall. Do I have the money? Oh, whoops, I forgot to detach from the wall. We're jumping up the wall just to get away from the imminent danger. 
it is just as much an action game as it is like a time management resource loot goblin type of game, and I, I like I do like that fact about it. Oh no, somebody is blocking my path. Now you can jump over the enemies that are blocking your path, and I've kind of wasted time here because I was trying to avoid taking damage. But yeah, that's a thing. I want to get 20 because I want to get better resource collection up, but yeah, sometimes you can waste these runs trying to get better resource collection and just, you never manage to defend the spider bot. Um, also too, the way that you progress from run to run is the more of these orbs that you destroy, you unlock this white blinking star orb sort of thing, and that's your currency from run to run. So if you see those little, like, fairy looking things that are following me around and coming onto me, that's my the way that I'm getting experience from run to run. So just... Basically, anything that you do is making you better for the next run, which it is going to take multiple runs in the truest roguelite sense. Uh, I think that's good. We're at capacity here. I might make one more tra tra uh, trip in. If death avoids you, well, then you just live longer. The one thing I find is that the speed... I, I wish that they would buff the speed a little bit because I find that it's, it's just never enough. It's never enough. No matter what you do, no matter what you try. I'm going to purchase a one-time repair. Maybe I will, uh, I will purchase a two-time repair and maybe perhaps regret it later on. The drone system isn't a bad thing to upgrade. The one thing that can be kind of a buzzkill at times is some of the weapons have uh, better enemy penetration. So there's a laser that you unlock or you can unlock. Like if we find a back way passage here which is what I'm looking for at this point. Like, do, how deep back does this thing go? Oh, I found one. I might get a better weapon here. Let's see. So I found a secret snake society kind of thing. Oh, God, there's another wave right now. Oh, I found a shotgun. I've never even used this. High spread, low rate of fire, extremely effective up close. Uh, I'm wondering if that's even going to be effective. I really enjoy the laser, although my ship is probably going to get horribly, like, destroyed now because of what I've done. I'm not going back into this cave because I've clearly found the best thing here. I'm not just going to go back for a couple of minerals. Let's move the bot. I am in trouble right now. I am I am in a lot of danger. Oh no, and the bad things are at the sides of it. This is very bad. Um, I do have a shotgun though. 10% fire rate or shot steal too. I will take the 20% more damage. Build damage, then attack speed. It's a League of Legends lesson. Uh, I'm now going to put away my machine gun. And take out my shotgun. Detach. And then jump, because this is getting very hairy. Ooh, damn. I'm the man. Look at me go. Man, this shotgun is rather effective. Uh, there is a good enough weapon variety that I feel like they could even add in more stuff if they wanted to, and that would be just fine. Now, I'm trying to manage time as I manage the combat right now because there are some rather long lengths of wall, as you can probably tell. Um, oop. Had to destroy that. Uh, it would be great if I could move while fighting at the same time because I don't want to waste time during, let's call it the daytime, when the enemy hordes aren't there, trying to find another cave entrance. Like, remember how close the other ones were? These ones are clearly not very close, and that is not particularly good for me. Uh, wait a minute. Why is my shotgun not out? Good. Okay, now I can attach here. Although this is quite bad because now I'm dealing with adversity and danger. I am instantly regretting this. Let's exit the mine again. We'll get back up. And is my bot going to get destroyed? I am really su surprisingly close. I've played quite horribly here. Hang on a second. I think we can survive it. Just need to use my machine gun a little bit. But yeah, the longer it takes you to deal with combat, I guess the one regret here is there's not really much of a reward for combat. Um, because this is a surprisingly large enemy wave, and I'm surprised that... Well, I mean, I, I'm just generally surprised, and it takes up more time before the boss battle in the end. I guess you could use the combat time to kind of explore the caves around you, which now that I mention it, that would probably be a much better way to manage my time. Although with the drone out here now, I've sort of automated my defenses. And I might perhaps just be able to go in, but look, I've found more repair stuff, and that makes my life a little easier, right? 
Anyway, I passed up the cave beneath me because it's gonna contain a resource type that I don't really need here. It contains like the rainbow colored rocks and those are just kind of a waste for me. I don't know, I'm destroying that one. I should be going for these. I should be able to repair, but I guarantee you I'm going to die to the final boss. And that will make me sad because I was hoping that I would perform better. But that is to say, this has happened to me literally every run. And so in that in that sense, I, I do find these types of roguelites a little frustrating where you, it feels like you don't have any chance at winning um, in your first run. I do like there to be some more chance of winning. And it just seems like it would be really difficult to do that. But otherwise, I do like this game and I think that it, it, re it deserves that full mention as it were. Uh, let's see, we've got six. Let's buy one repair. And I could go Shotgun Boy, but I think I'm going to... I should probably be thinking for the final boss battle now. Yeah, that would be better. Um, hmm. Bad things will come to me. I would like to upgrade the drone itself. Better shots in the burst. We want it to have better reload and less spread. So let's focus on upgrading our drone. And then maybe we'll repair the ship before the final waves. I think that the final wave is going to coincide with the final boss battle, though, here, and we'll just be in trouble. Uh, we definitely won't win, and we'll definitely do another run, but hopefully they will culminate in something perhaps slightly more climactic, because these runs do tend to be rather short. It's kind of like you're getting that similar vibe to, like, I don't know, 30... What was that game? 20 Minutes Till Dawn? That was a really good game. Teach you to pronounce. I can teach you how to pronounce squirrel. Playing Rimmerall, then you'd be surprised how often it comes up. That's true. Squirrels do often arise in Rimworld, and this is problematic if you don't know how to pronounce the word. Generally speaking, I. Well, this is honestly a rare issue. Um, but at the same time, yes, yeah, squirrel. That's how you pronounce that word. Is does that answer your question? You're being serious, right? Let's get the better fire rate on this thing. Okay, I have been a repair. Now, obviously I could have used that money to finance perhaps a child's college education and that might have been a better use of the money. Uh, but unfortunately I was not able to. I was not able to. Uh, and I suffered for it and I suffered through it, but it was righteous suffering. Here we go. Oh no, I always regret this in roguelikes. Please stop making me purchase a short-term solution. See how small that wave was? I found that bizarre and problematic. Also, Icky Neko, thank you very much for the 25 months. I do appreciate it. I also find that I'm forgetting to press the one button to launch my homing missile here. That's one of my powers. Uh, so that I cause a explosion uh, on, on the enemy, on the adversary, as it were. We want to cause greater explosions. Here we are. Um, no. Oh, there they come. The little fairies of white. What are they? They're the rock spirits, everyone. They're the spirits of the rock. I could buy more plasma drill range, but I think I want to actually try. Actually? I think I want to try for the final boss battle. Um, plus eight pellets in every shot. That's pretty OP. Let's just go for this, though. Uh, maybe we'll get it for the final thing. I'm gonna have to make a quick trip back in. This was a good last mine before the final boss. I don't think I'm gonna... I would probably not survive. The final boss tends to be faster than my I'm capable of moving. You should be able to dodge it, but it's, uh, it's kind of a costly upgrade to invest in. It is. It's These games are about life. They're about making investments in, uh, in a mutual fund, you know? That's what games like Dome Keeper, like uh, Wall World, that's what they're all about in the end, really. Oop, oop, here we go. Okay, this might be my last chance. Let's bring these ones over. That might be a final repair there. Look at that. Now I'm going to game the system. Look, here I go. I'm gaming the system, everyone. Ooh, look, look at me go. That was so skilled of me. Okay, this is definitely going to be the final wave. Look, I'm going to get a full repair. Unfortunately, I was... I was stuck procrastinating for the entire game and my life was just garbage but uh hang on a second i'm gonna buy one or two more repairs i might even be able to buy three look at me go um hang on a second i need more upgrades i have something else i have to do here uh what are we gonna do now 
We could buy the we could buy more pellets in every shot, or we could get the machine gun. You know, we have 16, let's go for the more pellets in every single shot. And we will detach from Mr. Wall. We will swap to machine gun. Look at all of the pellets. That's more. Wow. I didn't expect that. When it actually that it would actually deliver on the promise that it said. Okay, this is the idea, is to get a better weapon and to improve. Now, I, again, I don't know what's going to happen once we do finally get to the final boss, but... God damn it, I hope something good happens at last. I think I can leave the rest of this for the drone. Ooh, free thing! You know, I suppose you could play the game a little bit more just like here. Finding these freebies. Okay, this guy is also preoccupied with water for some reason. Uh, I am in great danger, though. Nine left. I think I might be able to buy also the turret rotation upgrade because the final boss's uh, vulnerable parts are a little bit farther apart. Thank you for reminding me of the missile. I forgot about the missile again. I'm just going to keep my hand on the one button. Uh, whoops. Nope, I didn't mean to disconnect from the spider. Here we go. Five seconds left. Okay, now we're at the final boss. Or I don't know if it's the final, but it's at least like the first boss. I'm going to swap back out to the... Uh, machine gun. So the final boss has a lot of really obvious targets. I hope you can see. I'm just going to rely on the machine gun spread and hope that something good happens in my life here. Oh god, I have been crushed by a tentacle. Uh, hang on a moment. I'm swapping the machine gun. The problem is, with my current spider as it is, I can't really avoid them very easily. Like, I need a lot of free time. And I also can't really dodge on the wall. It's like, do I go for the short-term win, or do I... Oh, shoot, Jesus. Oh, it doesn't get the entire full area of that effect. Now beginning to notice. Do I have... I do have five. I could buy a repair as an upgrade. I'm just gonna try to aim at enemies in the general direction of where the boss's vulnerable parts are. And then hopefully any bullets that go past those enemies will hit it. Let's go ahead and buy another upgrade. But I will say, like, this boss fight is necessarily really difficult for what you start out with. Okay, let's keep just aiming at those because the machine gun has the greater range. Now, I've destroyed one of those things, but I haven't destroyed the other one in my past playthroughs. There we go, one, one. Let's see if something nice happens to me today. Wow. Um, am I going to... Oh, the missile! I totally forgot about the missile! Uh, I would have won if I had not- Look, the missile was right there! What a buzzkill! Oh my gosh! Ah! Uh. Anyway, I'm not particularly good at action games, as you can tell, but yeah, that's the main idea there. Wow, what a horrible way to end it! What an incredible cliffhanger for the next one! Okay, after great adversity and lots of crying, the shedding of tears, we have unlocked more things after two generations of drill men have died. And now it all remains for this last drill man to hopefully leap where his forefathers fell. He will go into the void in order to collect rocks. More rocks than any of his ancestors collected before. Using the technologies that his former ancestors used, and then some, in order to achieve greater greatness, of course. Here he goes up the mountain. Hang on a moment. Mm. Good. Oof. Look at me go. Wow. Okay, I have reached... We have gone where no none of my ancestors have gone before. I always think of these roguelikes kind of intergenerationally like that, you know? Which is why I was trying to say before that Rogue Legacy is, is probably, like, the most true-to-form roguelike. Hmm, yes. More laser technology. I sometimes think to myself, though, that if I were to just entirely ignore the lasering, and if I were just to focus on the spider's speed, I could just have the spider do all the mining for me and dig into new caverns in the mountain. Although this this is one of the most enjoyable like ASMR mini games. Just oh my god, destroying a rock and the sound effect that it emits is just irreplaceable. A great sound. I like it. 
first wave is easy. Let's just not really spend money on it. Although I will need this. I don't want to avoid getting the next level of laser fast. Really, getting to laser level 2 ASAP is like... Basically the pivot between a good game and a bad game. You know what I mean? Oh, getting a risk of rain vibe from the... Oh, actually, you're right. Yeah, I am kind of getting a risk of rain vibe as well. Like the original risk of rain. I, I think that's a good comparison. I like it. It seems to me like just such a wonderful world of indie games. For everything that we have lost from AAA studios in terms of... And I'll say this, people like to rag on AAA studios. And there's a lot of things that I don't really like about them now. But I also imagine that for a AAA studio to be as agile as it possibly could in a world where there's just such a low barrier to entry now to developing games, um, I think they're going to struggle now. I think, like, the market kind of favors these smaller indie experiences. But it's nice that game devs who are really passionate about their projects get rewarded for it, you know, rather than having to work for, like, a huge company. Or sometimes they'll work for them and they'll learn something. And I think that's a lot of where the kind of, like, business of gaming lies now. Because we do play a lot of games on this channel, I think of that. I guess my only regret is I really liked the act of collecting games in the past. It'd be nice now if we had more services like GOG or stuff like that, where you kind of, you know, like you can actually back up the game to an external uh, hard drive or something like that. Just because I think of all the amazing indie experiences that we're having right now and like, how will I preserve these things? Um, which makes me sad, which makes me sad. I know some games on Steam are like, aren't they, uh, what is the term, DRM free or something? I don't know how it is, just, yeah, game preservation, like, what is gonna happen with that? I don't like paying for the game, like, 15 times, but there are some people who theorize that games will all become free, and, like, basically you pay for a subscription in 20 years from now or something like that, and that just seems kind of crazy to me. I can't even imagine that world. Although, I think that if that ever were to happen, you would have all video games that could be bought for like $10 a month. It would be like YouTube Premium, you know? Like, you don't buy- nobody's buying CDs anymore because you could spend like- Well, people do buy CDs, but some people like to collect CDs, and that is kind of a lost art form, you know, in a way. Um, or like Vinyl came back, for example, that's another one. But yeah, video games... If I had to take a guess, I would say that there's probably going to be some subscription service in the future where you just buy, like, all of the indie games that have ever that you've paid for today. <laughs> you've spent hundreds of dollars on them, and you get everything for $10 in the future. It's already happening with stuff like Xbox, uh, Xbox Game Pass. Except that sometimes they don't really give you all the experiences that you might have wanted from your past. So, you know, like, oh, you could play Blinks, but you can't play uh, Dynasty Warriors or something like that. And a lot of that has to do, I guess, with licensing. I was just thinking about this, though, because yeah, one of the things that I find that I get more passionate about as I get older is, like, game preservation. Like, you know, the kind of the same way that you enjoy the memory of doing things. I was chatting a little bit about this. I finally found, like, what I do on Twitter, which is that I make existential posts about video games. And I really enjoy that stuff, and I didn't realize that so many people were kind of as passionate about that as me until I just started, like, tweeting about it a little bit. I think it's kind of a stupid thing to just tweet all the time. It's really just for fun. Says the guy who's about to get addicted to Twitter. I know. Chad, I'm monitoring myself. Movies. More and more every publisher demand you get subscriptions making it hot. Well, some people have theorized that, like, you will... You will have to pick and choose either to own the experiences that you like in the future, or you will just subscribe to them. Um, and you won't own anything. The kind of, like, twisted World Economic Forum, like, thing that they had said, like, that you'll own nothing and be happy, and then they were like, oh, wait a minute, we have to revise that, or... I can't remember what, what happened there. You know, that's very quoted. Maybe I'm misquoting it. I'm sorry if I am. Sorry, World Economic Forum. I mean, that basically became a meme. Yeah, I'll just say it's the meme. You'll own nothing and you'll be happy. I do believe that was the direct quote. <laughs> I don't think they meant it in the kind of Orwellian sense, but it came across in that sense for sure. Which is very funny. Um, 
But yeah, it's kind of true. Everything's turning into like subscription services now. I mean, think about how much people are willing to pay for a game nowadays. Like, it used to be in the past that people were willing to pay... Like, even before inflation had happened, like 50 or $60 for a game. Even back to like... Wasn't it Super Nintendo time? I know they differed, but I was chatting with a guy about this. Um, okay, cool. Yep, we got the sprint ability. Yes, sprint ability. This is very good. Good. Okay, nice. My sprint has been depleted. Yeah, the things that don't ever have a physical release are somewhat terrifying. Although, I mean, the I would say that the one thing that the government kind of protects is the idea that basically every single work of art after a hundred years enters the public domain. So it's kind of like, you know, uh, what is it, Riverboat Mickey Mouse is coming into the public domain. There are other versions of Mickey Mouse that have been, like, protected under um, trademark and stuff like that, but it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting idea that, like... You know, all of the stuff from hundreds of years ago, even like jazz music, or think of classical symphonies, like a lot of those things. Whoops, here we go, let's put the missile. There we go, good, good job, missile. Like a lot of people can now thankfully use classical symphonies in their YouTube videos, or they've been used in cartoons for like, uh, stuff like Tom and Jerry, you know, like to kind of set the mood. And I find that those things are really reliable. Yeah, just the whole idea of like art preservation versus how, companies kind of fill that niche seems crazy like oh no like we won't have uh, i guess people might have thought in the past like we won't have bands and symphonies playing anymore to play classical music and you won't be able to go to the classical music hall but now you can do amazing things like i don't know play music in your car just the advancement of technology is fascinating but there's always something that they'll try to get you to you know pay for Steak thrower. Okay, the steak thrower is somewhat useful, but uh, it's somewhat okay. Oh, abandonware, abandonware. Well, it's also on the up to the communities. I, I think what it comes down to at the end of the day is the only things that you can really own are the things that you can hold on to with your two hands. And I, I think also maybe it's kind of zen in that we enjoy games and we wish to preserve these experiences, but also like the joy is to be had in the moment that you were having it and the experience that it created for you. Anyway, that's like my Alan Watts kind of lesson for the day. I really do like Alan Watts. Hmm. Okay, the overdrive might be useful, actually. 10% speed bonus, 20% over... Uh, I will take the cool... Uh, no, I might not really get it. Eh, stake thrower. I could just upgrade my turret. I don't really have much else here. This is very good, though, the amount of stuff we've gotten. Um, or we could just upgrade the drone. The drone is quite an unambiguous one to get, and it also kind of automates for while I'm away from the ship. So let's do that. And, you know, we'll get a little bit of speed just because that's going to help me get around faster. Okay, cool. Okay, let's grapple hook downward again. Mmm, I like this. Look at me go. Wow, that did a lot of damage. Great job, Missile. Thank you, Missile. I appreciate you. Ooh, people are coming. Uh, I wish to take out these gentlemen, and then I will shoot another missile. Hopefully that'll go out. Yep, good. That took out both of them, and let's dig the cliff in here and just sink it into the side. That's really nice and so ah, look at how much more has been unlocked. See, it would have taken me many more minutes the first time I had tried this. Ooh, green things. Very useful for getting more uh, laser mining ability. Very good, very good. I think we're going to need about 20 of those blue things, though, to get the next part. So let's see if we can unlock those. Whoops. This one is a little bit easier to break. Uh, none of these are easy to break. Let's just get the easy to break ones. Yeah, I think that that more... Yeah, that seems certain now. The more sedimentary, broken-up pattern is easier to break through. Ooh, didn't really need green, but green is always good. Pokemon Emerald it comes to mind. Guys, Let's Pokemon go. Emerald is like $200 now. I grabbed a copy of it. I had sold mine from when I was a kid, but... Damn, Pokemon is expensive. I don't like that. There's still a lot of them out there. Fortunately, I did manage to secure copies of most of them last year, though. 
Hey, Aaron Burr, sir. Thank you very much for the two months. Appreciate it. And Zafiel, thank you very much for the sub. The happy birthday song is now in the public domain. When was happy birthday from? I thought that was just a folk song they were singing. Like from cavemen times, wishing one another a good day. And when they were using the Gregorian calendar. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Yes, it was a Gregorian calendar. If you don't know something, just make something up and use big words and you'll sound like you know it. And then you create a lot of danger on the internet. Because then some people believe everything they read on the internet. Because it was written down. Um, satire. Satire. This is just an elaborate ruse, everyone. Don't worry. Uh... Ooh, I should be able to get back inside of that mountain cliffside overdrive time. I think we got a very good character this time. Maybe this isn't like the game winning character, but this is going to be much better than the last ones we had. Still unlocking experience. Looks like we don't have anything over there. Okay, good. We have weak walls right here. Did I already get the main thing from this part? Either way, my laser is just so much more efficient now that I think I can just go through. Okay, lots more ceiling space. Uh, okay, okay, good, not bad. Okay, here we go, more blue, that's helpful. From the top and down. Anyway, I always find that my commentary just devolves into that whenever I'm playing roguelites, because there's not enough to talk about, obviously, so it's like, just get kind of philosophical about that. I think I've managed to, <laughs> I will say that I used to do this after work between like midnight and 4 a.m. when I was 18. I would just go home and like play indie games. I played indie games on a very cheap MacBook Air that I was using for college. And it gave me so much joy to just play low res games. Um, I always had a sense when I was a kid because we couldn't, like we didn't have a very good family computer. So whenever I would play games on it, I would basically destroy the computer. <laughs> Do you remember how hot your computer would get? Back in 2003. So I always had the sense that I was destroying the family computer and like <laughs> running us out of uh, house and home whenever I would just try to have fun. Like everyone would be upset with me for playing a computer game and I'd be like, well, what? Like was, my sister put like 20 million CDs on the computer. Here we go with the CDs again. But yeah, um, I put video games on it. The video games on it were far worse for the computer, but the computer was like ready to blow up. So basically, I always felt like I... Well, I enjoy YouTubing, with, especially with simulation games, because it reminds me of a joy that I felt like I, I couldn't really have when I was a kid. Um, or like, that was looked down upon. So I feel like I'm getting away with something when I make videos. That's why I enjoy... Aside from the fact that I play video games for a living now. Well, there's more to it than that, but... Uh, I always do kind of question that, but I, I think that that's really what's the the humdinger for me, if you will. That's always been the humdinger. The humdinger. Oh my god. Okay, let's make our way further down the wall because we have the drone kind of automating the defenses for us. Look, there goes the drone. Whenever we find the next cave entrance, which there it is, now we can set the drone to do our fighting for us. I gotta say, I really like this kind of 2D slash 3D look to it. Oh my god! Going where no man has ever gone before! Look at me, go, Jesus. This place is disgusting. This reminds me of Mom's Womb in The Binding of Isaac. Remember Mom's Womb? Like, just bloody and full of, uh, blood monsters. I don't know. I don't mean to imply that wombs are disgusting. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a womb, but Mom's womb in Isaac was particularly uh, ghastly, let's say. Yes, like an inflamed colon. Thank you. What a good analogy that was. Oh, wow, that's disgusting. Why would you say that? An inflamed colon. Now I can't get that thought out of my head. But yes. 
laser machine gun. This is what I was trying to tell you about before, but no one would believe me. Oh no, I wasted my sprint because I got too ambitious with getting other things. Don't you hate it when that happens? All right. Can I afford healthcare yet? Jokes, Chad. I do have healthcare. I I do try to take care of myself these days. Um, let's see. We have six of these. I do think we're going to definitely need some repairs, hopefully even more. But I'm thinking laser machine gun is just a way better weapon than anything we have right now. You haven't seen the laser machine gun. You have not witnessed it yet, but it is very, very cash money. Hang on a second. Here we go. And... Okay, I will swap to the laser. Look at it go! Look at how much faster the bullet speed is. Look at how much better the penetration is. Don't laugh that I said penetration. It's not funny, chat. Nothing funny about bullet penetration. <laughs> There's some words that when you just say them, everyone giggles. Ah, oh, it's a great time. This is like when I, back when I used to teach, I taught middle school math. You know this story about me. I was a very amateur math teacher when I first started. My kids that I was teaching had just figured out like that the number 69 was funny. And you try to get the kids to participate in any way. Like, oh, draw your own X and Y axis. Like, do anything you can. Just because, you know, the idea of... A lot of the idea of teaching them being really, really rough around the edges here, but is to just get the students doing more and you speaking less. Like, uh... Kind of like learning by doing. Anyway, that was a, a really rough summation of what I learned in my first two years of teaching. But anyway, I learned that I could never ask the kids to give me an example number because at a certain point, it just became 69. And then that just devolved into other issues and I, and I hated that. And then I could never ask them for example numbers anymore and then they weren't allowed to do that and every, everyone got in uh, trouble. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I really regret that. Anyway, every teaching story I have from teaching middle school contains, like, something really funny, and then something really, like, just immature and sad and regretful and, like, oh, and then I had to stay after school for three hours because somebody called somebody else a name, and, like, uh, I had no work-life balance, and I was very young. I taught middle school when I was, like, 22. This very young age. In retrospect, I look at 22-year-olds now, I'm like, oh, you're not ready for this. Especially young dudes, I think. I think younger dudes. I sometimes don't think I was emotionally mature enough at the age. But looking back, I, I, did, I did change a lot. It did change my entire personality. For the better, I think. For the better. My friend taught pre-K. She learned a lot. She would touch poop every day, and <clears throat> let me tell you something, that's birth control, my friends. Well, the age difference was, I think they were like 10 to 12, but yeah, when I look back at myself at 22, I'm like, dang. Yeah, it didn't, well, the tricky part was that I, I could hardly even support myself when I was doing it. You know, they need to give, they need to give a little bit more, uh, I don't know, credit to 22 year olds. Even the place was pretty good, but I couldn't even afford to live near the school. It was, it was tricky because I was like, then you get this kind of guilt thing. Like, well, why am I not sacrificing my health for my students? I do love them. I learned a lot. They learned a lot. I probably learned a lot more than them though. But yeah, I was just talking with a parent about this recently, like this kind of notion that in our society when you are raising children or or doing anything for children that it needs to be so extremely self-sacrificial and oftentimes people will burn themselves out and like it actually does more harm than good for the kids because it's like it just sets this bad example of you deserve everything and i should burn myself out in order to like take care of you and it can be very toxic um, yeah, it's bad. But anyway, I had to learn that when I was like 25. I was like, oh, I had no work-life balance and... <laughs> yeah, I basically just didn't socialize for years because I was in like a endless commuting cycle. Well, I did socialize. I would con converse with like hundreds of 
hundreds of people a day, but it was also just too much. Yeah, not good. Anyway, that's one of the reasons I I struggled with the Northeast, is because I just found that it made me into, like, kind of a, a worker bot in a machine. There are better ways to experience it, but I think you need more money than I had when I was growing up. Not that, like, oh, so it was so hard for me. It was so hard for me. Uh, I hate virtue signaling, but yeah. I, I think that's all valid. The one thing I didn't realize, I always thought when I was a teacher, I felt like guilt for, in, even for something as simple as just enjoying, like, gaming, which is odd. But one of my buddies became a teacher recently of high school, and he's, he's taking better care of himself, I think. I'm trying to think of other people who were teachers on YouTube. Up is not jump. I actually had a very good talk with Up is Not Jump. I was like, you're the only one who's like me. Uh, no, there are a lot of them. Hated my time as a teacher, but it was good, but the kids suck. Uh, I did have a really good final year in teaching. Oh, wait a minute, why is the, oh no, we're at the final thing. Ironically, I you find your groove after about three years. Okay, it's laser time, everybody. We're exiting the mine. We might have enough health care to, in order to make this all worthwhile. Let's keep shooting lasers. Man, there's really too much spread here. I'm liking the bullet penetration. This is good. This is helpful. Look, we've already taken out one of the of the dingle hoppers. This is it. Wow! Wait, that was only the first time that we encountered the tentacle monster? I thought that was the final boss, and here I am. Remaining. And still with the... I thought I had beaten the game. We had an understanding. Wall. World. Earth is not flat. It's a, it's a vertical line. Uh, which is also happens to be flat, so I stand corrected, but... Hmm. The one thing that I think was tricky with middle school, I will say this, if you were a teacher yourself, is you can't really be yourself around them. Like, you need to kind of just constantly have this, like, poker face. And it, it, that probably became the most exhausting thing to me at the end of the year, was like, I have... I have a... I have a quirky sense of humor, I hope that... Like, oh, look at me, I have a quirky sense of humor. Like, it is what it is, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think I generally tend to have kind of like an offbeat sense of humor. You can't really use that at all. Or like, if you do in any way and you don't execute 100% perfectly, someone will like go home and misreport what you said to their mom. And it's tricky. It's sort of like, if you're teaching high school, like it's such a subtle age difference. Um, I had a way better time because that I could actually be myself and it wasn't just physically exhausting to be around a bunch of ch <laughs> You You do. You need the nurturing thing. You do. And you can learn it. And it's tricky because you don't... It feels like something that can't be learned. But I did learn to be more nurturing. It was painful, let me tell you. I don't think it's something natural. Especially for, like, a young dude to be nurturing. But yeah, it, it was tricky because I was able to more authentically be myself by the end of it. One thing that was useful, I will say, is I, I had one person tell me once that they thought that I had the wrong personality for teaching. And it was just like, ooh, it was the worst thing. I felt so bad. But I had to get out of that because some people just kind of take their day out on you. Um... And eventually I found a colleague who had a very similar personality and way of teaching to me. And he was a really good teacher and it just helped me buy into my own confidence, which I didn't really have when I was that age. It was tricky. Wonderful experience. The teachers treated students uh, as adults and were more relaxed. Well, it would be nice if you could do that with middle school, but a lot of the middle schoolers will insist on being treated like adults and then do things where they act like children. With high schoolers, you can do it much more easily in many venues, and there's more dignity in it. But kids are at very different developmental stages when they're... Like, it does require a full understanding of, like childhood developmental psychology, which wasn't really something that I thought I would be interested in when I was in college, so I avoided taking a lot of those gen ed classes. But now, in retrospect, I'm like, this would have been fascinating to learn. Um, 
It would be nice if someone explained that a little bit more to me when I was in college, but, you know. That's why life is a good teacher, I think. Let's get a little bit more range on our pickup weapon. I think I can save this repair for here. How old am I now? I'm 28 now. I started teaching a little... It was around when I was doing YouTube as like a hobby, when I was 22. But I had always known that I wanted to teach in life. Fortunately, I did get to teach a little bit of high school. High school, I think, was what I really wanted to teach. Um, especially when you're starting out, it's it's tricky to get the grade in the subject area that you want. Unless if you like throw yourself into studying teaching. In retrospect, I'm glad that I didn't study teaching because I think a lot of it was um, related to like childcare, which was something that I wasn't completely interested in. Um, but I developed a much greater interest in it. And I, I do think it's an important skill for life as you go through it. Because uh, children are the future. I mean, necessarily. Oh my God, look at this. What the hell is that? It's an orb. <laughs> what is that? This laser is so much better than what we had before. I can. Ad I'm an adult. I can eat crayons of it. Well, the one thing I will say is, uh, yeah. I mean, it literally it does change your personality, or it doesn't change, or it might not change your personality, but it will make you much more confident in whatever it is you do. Looking back, I I think that was one of the things that gave me so much guilt. I had so much guilt at that age, like I was doing it all wrong. But I think meeting someone who just straight up told me, like, this fearing, this fear of imposter syndrome, what if it's me? What if I'm not good enough? What if I do have the wrong personality for this? Have somebody literally say that to you. And then I remember right after that, the principal of my school said, like, the nicest thing to me. Like, it was the hardest meeting I ever went through in my career. Because I got cornered by this person, and I was just like, I was just young and feeling bad. I wasn't confident. And there's... <laughs> My principal, like, really stood by me there. It was a rough moment, but I appreciate that she did that. Because it was just like... And she didn't make a big thing of it either. She was just like... This is one thing that she said, like, Oh, don't mind her. <laughs> like, that person really, uh... That person was a piece of work. <laughs> uh... Yeah. Basically that. It was just like... I don't know, very validating. It, it, it did help me grow a lot just as a human being, though. And I do recommend it. I do recommend it doing it in a context, though, where it's not, like, quite so logistically horrific as when I did it, personally. I'm not a teacher anymore. And that always comes up, though. I always find that that talk seems to be interesting to people. Everyone can kind of, like, relate to teaching, because, well, you all at least had teachers, or you... Or many of you are, and you thought you would relate to it. Getting bullied. Don't get me started on another overused term. Well, things things like that. Like, for example, when I would talk to middle schoolers about bigger topics that actually concerned them, you can't really do it in a way that any of the guides tell you to. Like, people will say, talk to the kids about bullying. Every single teaching resource that you have is totally irrelevant. So mostly, you're just, like, learning from colleagues with these tricks that actually work. But with middle school, nothing works? <laughs> like, I would have... These really good progressive educators giving good advice on stuff, and one of them was just like, Yeah, this age group sucks. <laughs> this is a hard age group. No one knows what to do here. Uh yeah. You need you need supportive admin and colleagues though. I don't think any of this fluff really makes a difference here, so I'm just gonna skip through it. Onward we go, tally ho! The funny part was that when I was teaching high school, I would, like, I, I was, I had much less imposter syndrome then because I was like, okay, this isn't my first thing. You know, I've learned, I've figured enough of this out. You could relate to the high schoolers and tell them how tricky it was teaching the middle schoolers. And it was like, they knew that you had eyes in the back of your head and stuff like that. Yeah, like, but you kind of come in overprepared in terms of classroom management, so you get kind of this, like, um... Oh, uh, what is the key and peel sketch of the, like, substitute teacher? Like, this dude who's just on edge all the time. That was me when I was about 24. I was like, ah, <laughs> who threw that? Um, or like, I love school so much. And then you come in and you're like, 
Um, well, the good thing is that when you do that, and when you're overprepared in management ways, it, it does help your instruction immensely, and you can actually get stuff done, and the kids are learning more. But yeah, it's not like, who threw that anymore? <laughs> oh my god. The tricky part for me was that when I first started, I had a colleague who was a very experienced teacher, and he quit immediately in the place, and I'm like, how will I survive <laughs> if he can't do it? Oh my god. Yeah, it's hard to find, like, good male colleagues, too, sometimes in the earlier elementary. It's rarer. It's rarer to find the men. And the enemies are growing more diverse and crazy. I'm starting to think that maybe I can get more than 10 to 15 hours out of this game. There's quite a lot here to be had. I apologize for my random tangents just about anything in my own personal life. I, it has come to me recently that I'm like, uh... I don't know, I guess I'm just still kind of psychologically processing everything that happened to me in the last few years. I thought this about teaching. I was like, I never really processed all of that after it happened, but I did a crazy thing with life, and then I became a YouTuber and COVID happened. So I sometimes use you guys as, a as an unhealthy substitute to just talk about life. I am handling it, though. I am... No, I'm feeling great, though. Feeling great. I think one thing that is underappreciated in our world, perhaps, is a little bit more community, though. I've been thinking more about this lately. Maybe that's missing from the teaching. There's so many digital tools in teaching. Now that it almost... It seems to sometimes take away the humanness from it. That it gets lost in that. And they're useful, but... A lot of it is like good babysitters. Like how parents delegate the parenting to the iPad. Nothing wrong with that though. Sometimes it's a very effective tool. You don't have time, there are demands. I'm not judging you. Maybe it sounded like, maybe I was judging you at first, but then I revised it because I just tend to be inherently judgmental. Don't we all a little bit? Sorry. Here I come with my, like, woke emotional intelligence monologue. Yeah. Yeah, I've been thinking about this lately, guys. I've been thinking about this. You gotta take care of yourself. 25% fire rate. I'm really excited about this laser. I don't think that our mining upgrades are really gonna do that much more any anymore from here. Different ways I tell stories I've told before. Well, I think any anyone who has had a childhood can make their life seem interesting. I think teaching was almost like experiencing childhood all over again. Man, maybe I'll just make a, a channel where I talk about my trials and tribulations from teaching. It occurred to me recently that I never actually sought, like... There are some things... You see some shit when you're teaching. Uh, you're doing a lot of things that feel uncomfortable. Like, you have to go ahead and make calls to parents. And stuff like this, and I, I tended to be, and this is where I struggled as a teacher, and it was not a good thing. I tended to avoid conflict, because I would do it as a student. Because I was like a fairly, um, I don't know, I guess like studious student. So when I first started teaching, what I found was that often the personalities that do the best in teaching are people who are very bossy by nature. And I was like, ah, oh, this isn't really a virtuous trait to have in most other uh, maybe not virtuous, but yeah, it was odd for me to watch colleagues who were like very pushy and bossy just do really well in teaching. So you would avoid conflict and it would be like, well, we have to address this thing and necessarily there's going to be some pain involved. But you need to be willing to just kind of dive right into that with love. And it's tricky in teaching because a lot of it is social work. I think a lot of jobs have a social work component nowadays. Ooh, 30% reloading speed is pretty good. Pretty good after all. Look, we can repair this bot by a lot more. Look at us go. Lasers would definitely improve teaching. Well, I also learned to be comf more comfortable with like, like I'm a very meme -y sort of person and mm, what should I say? How do I say that? Like you need to have your authentic personality in your teaching in some ways, but it's also just like, um, kids nowadays, like, have the internet, 
And some kids were just getting exposed to like really edgy stuff that it's like, how do I even address this? Or do I even want to fight this battle? But how do I also like connect to them or relate to them in some way? And while being authentic, because I was really young when I first started teaching. I remember one time I like referenced SpongeBob on something and they were like, Mr. Amphibian knows, uh, yes, I'm not going to give away my real last name. Mr. Amphibian knows the, uh, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, that is my one piece of information. Um, I have a rather uncommon last name, and it would be easily identifiable. Ooh, gasp, there he goes. What is, what is it? What does AA's face look like? I will remain a mystery as long as I desire on the internet. No, but yeah, also, like, I remember during COVID, I had to relate to these kids. So one time I just photoshopped a picture of me with laser eyes because I was getting really good at YouTube at the time. I was still teaching. Um, this is during my transition year, so I wasn't a full-time anymore. I did, like, what basically amounted to a sub gig. Um, and it was really fun because I could just work on stuff as, like, a hobby, and then that was my profession. But yeah, I remember, like, it. there's just something about that on day one that kind of catches their attention. Because you do need to be a performer. But COVID, man, that was tricky for actually getting to make sure that everybody, like, understood everything. It was a really, really difficult time to teach. But also, as a younger person, you could kind of, like, get over some of the imposter syndrome because it's like, oh, I know how to use a computer. I won't be totally just, like, futzing around for this entire time. <laughs> so it was, it was a nice time of equilibrium with some of the older teachers who really knew their craft. You could feel like you're on a more level playing field with everyone. Oh, there's something nice about it, though, in that you kind of get to run your own show when you're teaching. Like, you're, you're kind of the boss of your own area from day one, and that is nice. Although it is extremely tricky in the fir at the beginning. It's like, I have eight hours with these people, and I they're supposed to learn at the end of it? Like, how am I going to make that happen? No, there's more there's a lot more to it than that I just say that as kind of shorthand for the insane number of responsibilities that befall them look at these things go that's disgusting that is really disgusting I gotta say how did I develop the skill for using book great vocabulary um I think it's because my father used to memorize poetry and my entire family is full of English majors. It's just the way everyone would talk around the house. Um, I also have a lot of bad speech habits, though. I think it's also just that, yeah, the family was obnoxiously literary to the point where I actually... I, I didn't like how... Um, I often find this. My family growing up, they were very, like, literarily inclined. But no one really knew anything about, like, science or technology. <laughs> this is just like, wait a minute. Everybody in this family can speak really well, but no one can produce anything. And that gave me, uh... Anyway, that's, I guess, part of why I started YouTubing. Ooh, here he goes. Autobiographical AA. What will come next? Man, that is really satisfying pewing, though, you're right, isn't it? I can't speak very precisely. That would be a, a, draw, a major drawback of what happens with the way I speak. So if I start talking about science, I just sort of say, like, the electrons and the atoms come together to form a bond, and then there's some sort of connection, and science says that's how minerals are created. So I always struggle with that type of thing, you know? We talk about like positive and negative traits. My buddy and I were talking about this recently. Like I, I recently learned that as, a, as an ethnically Irish person mainly, I used to think that the only thing it came with was like skin cancer in the future. That is the negative trait that you get for being Irish. But, there's always a but, you also can metabolize dairy much more easily than the average person. Ah, uh, damn it! Something is always uh, uh, awry. Look at my laser. Go, 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 go. Man, we never would have made it this far with the machine gun. Thank God for me and my laser.
Uh, I should have gotten them when they were all close together and there was less of a spread. Now they are far apart and this is troubling to me. There we go. This is probably even my most stream of consciousness let's try video in like the last couple of years. I find that they're getting more and more like that over the years because I secretly have the desire to do what Northern Lion does. I really like it. Although this channel has always kind of been just the AA does whatever he wants and talks about whatever he wants sort of vibe. Anyway, I find that that's been really nice just to kind of have this as a space, as a dramatic space. Oh, I'll say my bone to pick with the whole literary thing though. I did find that as I got further on in college, I became frustrated and uh, aggravated. Let's see what other large words can, <laughs> frustrated and aggravated, wow. What an English major thing to say. Um, he's so self-aware, so self-aware. No, yeah, professors would talk about, like, this is the dramatic space of the narrative. And what I didn't really take seriously at the time was just, like, the power and the importance of creative stuff. Like, I took a really good creative writing class with one of the best professors that I ever had. And, like, I still use a lot of that, what I learned in that course, to, like, make videos to this day. But I never really took it seriously because I never thought that something creative could turn into something that, like, I don't know, gave value to the world in some way. Or gave value to other people, or even just to me. Um, but yeah, like... I wish I had studied more stuff that I actually liked. Like, just n not even trying to make it look like I was working when I was in school. You know? I, th I think that's part of how you reach more true happiness. It's just by not caring. But no, I went beyond it! Further than ever before. Am I turning into a VTuber? Domekeeper flipped sideways. Oh, there is more to it. I thought that at first. Actually, th there is quite a lot more to it now, and it it does it does look and it does have all the same looks and feels of Domekeeper. I'm not really defensive about it. I mean, if it were more like it, I wouldn't think it. I think it's a more feature-rich game than Domekeeper, but I like Domekeeper for the same reason I will like Flash Isaac forever. I do like Domekeeper, guys. Uh, hang on a second, I have to detach from the wall. Oh, what a satisfying way to get bullet penetration here. Look at me go, look at me go. Wow, nice. Snoom! Have you ever been repelling before? Repelling is fun. It's merriment. I thought that was one thing, but it was actually two. Man, how thankful I am to have this drone. Drone, sweet drone. I think the other weapons here are useless. What are these guys going to send out? A nothing. Literally nothing. Oh no, they're, now they're coming for me. Okay, we're fine. I might have passed over one other tunnel, but it doesn't matter because they're all the same, doesn't it? I'm surprised there's so many of you guys here. I didn't I didn't think that you would like this game that much, but I, I think it must be a, a necessarily satisfying experience if we're all liking it this much. Can I share something with you guys? I sometimes feel like I'm getting old on YouTube, you know? Like the fact that I talk more about myself than about the game. And I feel like it's in bad form to not talk more about the game, and I do like it, but I find that Maybe it's like something existential about the game and that I relate to it personally. I feel like I'm getting through a lot about how I know myself as a person over the last couple of years. But yeah, um, it's, it's easy for me to overshare like that because I don't show my face online. But oh my gosh, wow, how amazing and self-aware he is. Um, hmm. Ooh, more shooty things. I like this. But yeah, I do find that the one thing that I kind of find myself doing effortlessly over time uh, is just that I cannot separate existentialism and gaming. And I think that they are... Like, the more I think about it over the years, the more I realize that is definitely true. Existentialism and gaming are, like, super related. Life is a game. Everything is a game. Guys, we're all just in a vast simulation. 
None of this is real. The points are made up. It's like all America's funniest home videos. What is it? No, that's the wrong show. Dang. Um, okay, I may die here. I may actually die. What was the show with the people? Whose line is it anyway? That, that was the show. This is a rather difficult one. I wonder when the final boss is. Mega boss. Mm hmm? Oh, no. You will not take me today. Well, look at me hopping to dodge. What an MLG move. Oh my god, I'm so good at this. Oh, I just said I'm good at this when I died. Oh no, my Robo Spider was destroyed. What a bad day. Honestly, I, I didn't think we would start discovering new stuff about the game like halfway into the video. Jeez, that was a way longer run than expected. I think it's I think it's fair to have one failure run and then one good run. I do wish they would update this sprite a little bit, but it kind of reminds me of Super Meat Boy. Let's see what else we can unlock. Anyway. I think I'm going to end it there. Um, Wall World, honestly, one of the best names for a game in recent history. And I do recommend this game. I, I think it is worth very much $5. I would also recommend Dome Keeper. I think Dome Keeper was more expensive but worth the price. But I think if you overlook this game, uh, you'd be missing out on a really good game, especially if you enjoyed Dome Keeper. I find it very addicting and relaxing. Um, Again, I don't think you're going to get like 100 hours out of it, but I would guess like 20 or something like that, right? Uh, let's up.